Okay, guys, so October 14th, 2025 is coming up on us quick at the time of recording this, probably only about two and a half months estimated. So are you guys at the point where you're trying to upgrade to Windows 11, but your PC does not meet the requirements, kind of like what you're seeing here? So the good news is in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to install Windows 11 on pretty much any Windows 10 computer, even unsupported PCs. And I'm going to do that and you won't even lose data. So whether you don't have a TPM in your system because it's too old or just didn't come with one, whether your processor isn't compatible with Windows 11 or whatever Microsoft says in their shenanigans, it's not a problem. This is the easiest way to bypass all those requirements and upgrade while keeping all of your files intact and your apps too. You'll, you'll lose nothing. So whether you're trying to install Windows 11 without TPM or whether you're looking to upgrade without data loss, this method, method will work on pretty much any system. So even if it's labeled incompatible. So you guys see on my screen here, I have Windows Update. I have that up on the screen. And it's right off the bat telling me here, this PC doesn't currently meet the minimum system requirements. So I'm curious. I already know why, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you why. I would be curious to know why, what's holding it up. So if you're curious, go ahead and get PC Health Check. I've already downloaded it. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click it here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit check now. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to hit show all results. It tells you that this processor is not currently supported for Windows 11, which is extremely stupid. Let's just say that this is an i7 7700 processor. There's zero reason why this processor should not be supported. It's a great processor. Um, other than that, everything else is set. So it's absolute just stupidity that Microsoft does this stuff. So that is why it's not letting me download or install Windows 11. The this, this system's great. Has this processor, 32 gigs of RAM, um, you know, a, a solid state one terabyte hard drive, or actually it's got a 500 gig and now I switched that out. But there's no reason why it shouldn't run on this. So again, we're gonna go through this step by step and we're gonna bypass all the silliness and we'll get you installed into Windows 11 today. So I'm going to close all this. Now there's going to be two things that you need for this, guys. I'm going to open up the web browser here. And I've already got these tabs loaded. Links are in the description below. The first thing you will need is the Windows 11 ISO file. Um, so come to this page here. And you're going to scroll all the way down to right here, where it says download Windows 11 disk image or ISO. So from here, you're going to click and choose Windows 11. And you're gonna go ahead and hit download now. And for a few seconds, it'll go through that Windows validating thing. And then it's gonna ask you to choose the language. If you are in United States, it will be English, United States, and then confirm. And it will go through this validation uh, one more time. And there we go. So then it will give you this download button here. It's available for 24 hours. So just make sure you grab that within 24 hours. So you just go ahead and click that. Now I'm not going to click that because I've already downloaded it and I've thrown it on my desktop. I'll show you guys that it's right here. That's the whole ISO. It's about five gigs. So it might take you some time to download that. So go ahead and get that going. Then the second thing you're gonna need is Rufus. And now Rufus is going to be the tool that we're going to use to create the bootable uh, USB drive to install Windows. So when you get to Rufus's page here, link in description, we're just going to scroll down all the way down here to where it says download. Now, most of you are going to be good with either one of these. It's for Windows X64. Um, but down here, if you have a 32-bit x86 and then... ARM processor, which is like a Snapdragon, generally in tablets and stuff like that. So most of you are going to be okay with one of these two. I chose portable, seems to work just fine. Uh, go ahead and grab that and get that downloaded as well. I've already got that downloaded, so I'm not going to download it. So let's go ahead and minimize. 
Now, once you have both of those downloaded, just make sure they're both done, especially that ISO, because like I said, it's 5.41 gig, it looks like. And uh, it's gonna take some time to download depending on your internet speed. So once you have them both, put them wherever you want. I just chose the desktop. Uh, you can put them in a download folder wherever you want. So first thing we're gonna do is run Rufus. And we're gonna go ahead and say yes, go ahead and run it. And sure, let's uh, see if there's any updates. And I don't see anything else popping up. So I think we should be good on the updates thing. It doesn't look like it went out and looked for them like it said it was going to. Okay, so first thing, oh, there it is. Um, okay, sure, let's go ahead and grab those. And no new version. Okay, cool. So anyway, um, you are going to need a flash drive for this. Now, I will tell you, the flash drive that you select, it has to be, I believe, 8 gigs or more, and it will get wiped. This process will wipe that flash drive. So, if you have anything on that flash drive that you don't want to lose, back it up or use a different flash drive. But the flash drive you select will be wiped out. Just a heads up. So, just keep that in mind. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose that flash drive. I've already got mine plugged in. And then what you're gonna do, the boot selection, this should be by default just disk or ISO image. And then right here, you're gonna hit select. And you, I'm on desktop, you are going to select that ISO image that you downloaded. And then you're gonna hit open. When you do that, um, it's going to fill in all this stuff for you. And then you can just give it a name because this is like a very complicated name. So I'm just going to call it Win11 um, and leave all this standard because it's reading it from your system. That is literally all you have to do with this first portion in Rufus. Once you are done with that, you simply have to hit start. Now, this is the meat and potatoes of everything, guys. This is what tells the installer it tells it what to put on the flash drive and how that installer acts so we're going to customize this eventually all these are just going to get check marked but let me go through them here so this will remove the requirement for four gigs of ram because windows 11 does require at least four gigs of ram i wouldn't recommend installing it on anything less um, but it removes that requirement and removes secure boot and TPM requirement. And as you know, Windows 11, that's one of their requirements. So this is gonna remove that. And it's already checked, so leave it checked. Next, removing requirement for an online Microsoft account. I don't like using Microsoft accounts. I don't like it. I prefer a local account. And so I'm gonna tell the system just to go ahead and create a local account with my username. After that, we're gonna set regional options to the same values as this user's. Um, which means, um, you know, your location and your language and stuff like that. So go ahead and set that so it could duplicate it from your current user on this system. Um, then we're going to disable data collection. We don't want to give Microsoft any more information than we have to. And then this only applies really if you're updating if you're on a pro version and updating to a pro version, because Microsoft has recently done this thing where, you know, they decide that your drives need to be encrypted and they throw your encryption key on your Microsoft account. We don't want this to happen. Again, Microsoft needs to quit controlling this stuff. So we will take our control back. Go ahead and disable BitLocker. You can enable it later if you'd like. So again, guys, the key is all of this stuff here is what is going to make Windows 11 install on this system. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and click OK, and then it will give you this warning, hey, anything on here is going to be erased. Again, keep that in mind, back it up, or use a different drive. You don't want to lose data. And with that being said, all we do here is click OK. Now at this point, it's going through the whole process You'll get pop-ups like this. Uh, just don't worry about those, ignore them. It's a normal part of the process, but it is basically making a installer 
on this flash drive that we will use to get Windows 11 on here. So let's just go ahead and let that finish on there. Uh, when it gets near 100%, I will come back and uh, we will continue. Okay, guys, looks like that is done. That took about 13 minutes, so really not bad. Um, it may take you a little bit quicker or longer, depending on the speed of your hardware processor, all that kind of good stuff in your computer. So when you are complete, when this part is complete, you have two options. Now, option number one is you can simply hit close here, keep the flash drive in your computer, restart your computer, tell your system to boot from the flash drive, and you can do a complete reinstall of everything, which includes wiping out your hard drive, which will delete all your data and apps, et cetera, et cetera. If you choose that option, please, please, please back up your, your data. I don't want you coming back and blaming me later because it wiped everything out. I'm telling you now, if you choose that option, back up your data because it's gonna wipe your hard drive. Now, most of us just want to update to Windows 11 from 10 while keeping our data, and that's the second option. So if that's your option, simply just hit close here, then we're going to open up our file explorer. And we're going to go to this drive that I created. As you can see, it's the same one. It's Win 11. And then you just double click on setup. We're going to tell it yes, go ahead. I'll go ahead and close that. And this brings us to a Windows 11 setup screen. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go through this step by step. We do not want to help Microsoft um, because I just have no interest in that. So I'm going to keep that unchecked and I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to go through and it's going to get any updates. Now this Windows 10 system is pretty up to date. I did some updates on it yesterday, um, so it should be up to date, but it's going to go ahead and look for updates. And then let's see what it's doing here. There we go. We're coming right back. So it saw that there were no updates, I believe. I'm just going to check your PC. It's just checking for simple stuff right there. And then just like if you were to install Windows 11 any other way, um, it's going to give you your license agreement and um, we accept that. And now I'll calculate things. I think right here it's like uh, calculating disk space and all that kind of stuff. Looks like it's checking for updates again. So it's, it's a process. Anybody that has installed an operating system, whether by this method or from scratch, you know you got to go through all this fun stuff. So, And uh, it looks like it's going through pretty quick, but let it do its thing here. Okay, it got through the updates part and continued. Now, this is a new thing when installing this way. Um, it it looks like this comes from Microsoft and it basically gives an explanation of how this PC doesn't meet requirements and stuff like that, which we already knew. Um, but it goes on to tell you that you might have incompatibility issues and you might not get, you know, the updates and stuff like that. So us in the tech community, I will let you know this. We have not seen any instances of updates not coming in. Um, from what we've seen, people are that are doing the install this way, they're still getting updates. Now, that's not to say that at some point, Microsoft can't come along and say, hey, you know, you bypassed the requirements, so we're going to stop updates on those machines. They have never said that they will do that. Um, but just know Microsoft is Microsoft, and they basically do what they want with their software, and they they definitely could at some point come back and say that. Now, no evidence that they will, but just keep that in mind when you do this. So we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, that's fine, Microsoft, we accept that. And now I think for the third time, <laughs> it's making sure that uh, you have enough space on your hard drive. And so it will uh, go through this a couple times and uh, we're just about on the way there. So, here we are, we got to this, we're ready to install. It tells us we won't be able to use our PC during installation, which we know. 
It reminds you to save and close your files uh, before you begin, but we shouldn't have anything open. And it's just recapping here. We're installing Windows 11 Home, which I believe my factory is on this machine, and we're gonna keep our personal files and apps. So with that being said, let's go ahead and click that install. Now, just like any other time that you install Windows, this is what you see. It'll tell you it's installing it. It'll say, you know, several times, blah, blah, blah. It'll go through a countdown here. And uh, you just got to wait it out here. Let it do its thing. And just like that, guys, in less than, I don't know, an hour, 45 minutes, we have Windows 11. Now, if we go in here and we go to updates, the stuff that people are worried about as far as getting updates. Let's uh, just check this and see if it finds updates and wants to start doing them. It always takes a little bit of time um, just to kind of check for those. But let's give that some time there. Um, in the meantime, if we go into settings, oh, look at that, yep. It is finding Windows 11 updates and downloading them. So, you know, nothing to worry about there. Everything is good. Now, for some reason, if you decide that you want to go back to Windows 10, um, just type recovery in your search here and click go back to Windows 10. And then there will be this option here to go back. Now, you have 10 days to do that. Microsoft only gives you 10 days if you decide to go back. Um, and with that being said, we can look at, um, you know, just the desktop here. It has all the files that were there. There was really nothing on this computer. So that's really all I have to show you that, you know, there was stuff on the system. And after the update, it's still there. So it didn't delete anything. It didn't wipe the drive or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, guys, that is it. Looks like it's getting the updates that it needs, it's installing them, and you're good to go in under, I'd say about 45 minutes total. But anyway, guys, that is how to get Windows 11 on even an unsupported machine using Rufus. If this was helpful to you, go ahead and click the like button. If you think others will get something out of it, feel free to share it. And if this helped you enough to where you think you wanna subscribe, I would love if you would do so. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. We'll see you next time.